Mercedes are taking a huge risk. As you all know, the Japan Grand Prix qualifying just finished and it found Russell and Hamilton finishing in P6 and P8. Now, it wasn't the result they wanted, so in today's video, we're going to be going through the huge risk that Mercedes are willing to take in order to find a way to win in the Grand Prix. So we're going to be going through that in today's video and also four other stories coming up to the Japan Grand Prix. So before we get into it, make sure you like this video and don't forget if you want more Mercedes F1 content like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that red button down below. But let's get straight into the first story and talking about the qualifying. So Mercedes couldn't match the pace of Red Bull, Ferrari and even Alpine in qualifying for the Japanese Grand Prix. With Lewis Hamilton and George Russell taking P6 and P8 on the grid respectively in a dry qualifying session. Mercedes flexed their muscles in Friday wet free practice too, Russell leading a 1-2 and lapping over 8 tenths faster than Max Verstappen in P3. But in the dry in qualifying, both drivers felt the limitations of their draggy W13 as Hamilton claimed 6, nearly a second off Verstappen's pole time and Russell 2 places and just over a tenth further back. The car felt really good today, I was really happy with the balance and with the setup we had. It was just slow on the straight, said Hamilton. We'd had a very draggy car all year, I'm pushing the pedal as hard as I can, but we can't go any faster. We are losing at least 6 tenths or something on the straights compared to the other guys, but through the corners, through the lap, it was still a fun lap to drive. So I think they did solve a lot of the issues when it came to the handling. However, the straights is definitely where Red Bull and Ferrari shine and where Mercedes really do struggle. Russell echoed his four times Suzuka winning teammate sentiments, saying the car was feeling okay in all honesty. Not perfect, but not as far as the lap time showed. It was a feeling within. We are losing a huge amount of lap time down in the straights compared to our rivals. That's kind of been the case all season, but I think this is the first circuit that has a long straight which you also have high downforce. Normally, when you look at the circuits with the strong straights, Spa, Monza, and even Silverstone, when you're running low downforce in the high downforce circuits, Monaco, Budapest, Zandvoort, Singapore, they have short straights. You don't really see the deficit in the straight line speed, but here that weakness was truly exposed. Andrew Shovlin, who actually is the engineer for Mercedes, Mercedes said a lot of different things when it came to what he's looking to improve on the car for the Japan Grand Prix coming up and he actually said they're looking to tweak the downforce as much as possible to really improve them on the straights. Now I think this is a good idea because obviously that's what Russell and Hamilton have been talking about when it comes that they don't seem as fast on straights and that's where Red Bull and Ferrari are really going ahead of them. However I do think the biggest problem that you face with this is there might be less handling on the car especially in that first sector of the Japan Grand Prix circuit where it really gets twisty and turvy. So I think that may play a really huge disadvantage in that sector. However, if Hamilton and Russell can really drive the car out and be able to handle it, even if they just tweak the downforce as much as possible in order to keep up with Red Bull and Ferrari's pace on straights, then I think it could definitely go their way. So it is a huge risk, but it's a high risk, high reward system. Now, meanwhile, what was he expected in Sunday's Japanese Grand Prix with an unsettled forecast on the horizon? Hamilton said, we didn't look too bad in the wet conditions, so I think either way, we should be a little closer than we were today, and just hoping for a better race result. You've got to expect that the Red Bulls and Ferraris are going to dash off on their own, potentially have their own race. Hopefully, we will be a little bit faster as we are today, as we are often in the race. I just have fun, I hope. And I think this really is important, because obviously Lewis Hamilton does have a record that he wants to keep going, which is recording at least one win in every season. So he has been keeping the streak alive, and obviously he wants to keep it going. Going. However, Lewis Hamilton says Mercedes are losing around half a second to F1 rivals Red Bull and Ferrari on the straights alone at the Japanese Grand Prix. Now, the seven time world champion qualified a distant six on Saturday, two places ahead of Mercedes teammate George Russell. But Mercedes set the pace on Friday during a wet second practice and fell back in dry conditions seen during FP3 and qualifying at Suzuka. Now, the reason why I think this is huge is because if it does end up raining, I think it will really play to Hamilton's advantage because I think Hamilton definitely can't be beat on wet conditions. So the rain could return for Sunday's Grand Prix with mixed conditions forecasts. Hamilton is hopeful wet weather could bring Mercedes back into contention. It depends on the conditions we have, he explained. If it rains, we didn't look too bad, of course, yesterday in the wet conditions. So I think either way, we should have a little bit closer than we were today. Just hoping for a better race result than we had last week. Asked if he thinks Mercedes could fight for victory at Suzuka, Hamilton said, uh, that's a real reach to try and say we can get a win. Those guys are 9 tenths ahead. You don't go from being 9 tenths behind in qualifying to winning a race. Now, obviously, a lot of people do want to see the confidence that Hamilton has in order to win this race. However, guys, we do have to 
have to be realistic in some areas where it really doesn't seem that the Mercedes car, especially the W13, isn't up for this challenge. But let's get straight into the second story. And the second story was Russell shocked by qualifi qualification, saying that they're a long way away. Now, Mercedes looked hopeful for the Japanese Grand Prix, but obviously George Russell did finish for P8. Now, P8 is not where we had hoped for to be qualifying here in Suzuka, Russell states. We didn't quite expect to be in the fight with Red Bull and Ferrari either, but we are a very long way off from them. We know our car has a lot of drag and on circuits like this, where you need a lot of downforce, but also to be slippery on the straights. We tend to lose out. There's something we are working towards correcting for the next year, but it takes time to do so. So I think this is really important to actually understand because with everything that is going on, there is a huge risk adding more downforce or, you know, really tweaking that in order to have more speed on straights because you're really affecting the handling on the car, especially in that sector one, guys. If you look at the actual circuit, you see in sector one of this Japanese Grand Prix or Suzuka, you see a lot of twists and turns. And I do think that if the downforce is tweaked just a little too much, Lewis Hamilton and also, you know, George Russell may actually spin out if they can't control their car well enough. Now, in the fight for second place in the World Championship, however, Mercedes need to stay close to Ferrari with Charles Leclerc and Carlos signs starting in second and third position respectively in Japan. The German formation has a tough task ahead on Sunday. Looking ahead to the race, I think we'll have a stronger pace than we showed today. Our long runs in FP3 were decent, but I'm not sure if it will be enough to race the top four tomorrow. Now I think it is really only honestly interesting to see because with everything that is going on, you know, Leclerc and Sainz continue to be really high up and very, very consistent. And that may play a huge to their favor due to the fact that Mercedes do want to take that second spot in the Constructors' Championship, and I think it will honestly be fantastic for this team as well. Now, getting into the third story of today's video, we actually have the Ricardo close to actually accepting Mercedes' F1 role. So we should have a few more pieces confirmed in the transfer market at Suzuka if the rumors hold true. Indeed, Alpine and also Red Bull are finalizing the transfer of Pierre Gasly to join the French team to replace Fernando Alonso for AlphaTauri, and it will then be a contract announced at the same time for Nick De Vries. As for the other buckets it should not move but a driver could sign with the team Daniel Ricciardo. The Australian is close to accepting a position as third driver at Mercedes F1 and it would be available to Mercedes F1, Aston Martin F1 and Williams F1 in 2023 if needed. It's not necessarily a bad choice according to Mark Webber, the manager of Oscar Piastri, the driver who took his place before the hour at McLaren. I had a good conversation with him, reveals the former Red Bull driver. I still don't think he's sure and certain but he asked for my opinion and a reserve reserve driver role at Mercedes makes sense. Who knows how long Lewis Hamilton will continue. Mercedes F1 is thinking quite pragmatically, so it's something he could consider. What does the main interested party think? Has he resolved his future? Fix it. I wouldn't say there's a problem. I'm just taking time to figure out what's going to be the best thing for me. I don't comment on rumors and options because there's no urgency. I don't feel any pressure to sign something quickly. I want to take the time. I will not just sign the first contract to be back on the grid and a reserve driver position is in a good team is also an option. I will continue this season. I'll clearly see what is best for me and I don't need to close any doors right now. Now I think this is really important to state because obviously with Daniel Ricciardo and everything that is going on, there really isn't a lot of openings for an actual driving position. So I think for him to take this, you know, reserve role is a very, very smart idea. He has thought about just taking a break. And although I think that, you know, may be smart and it may be good, it will give him out of the game for a full year. I know it doesn't sound like a long time guys, but when you're actually performing performing at the highest level, it's really hard to get back there, especially at Daniel Ricciardo's age. He's not very old, but he is getting older by the day, and it will be hard for him to, you know, really adjust after a full year of taking a break and coming back and really driving at the highest level. And by that time, I think it is good for him to continue to practice and continue to still be involved in the sport. So that's why I think this reserve role would be perfect for him. Now, the fourth story or fifth story, sorry, in today's video is about Mercedes boss Toto Wolff on Red Bull's budget breach cover-up. Now, Mercedes team principal Toto Wolff claims Red Bull's budget cap breach should not be considered minor as it has long-term consequence on the championship battle. Toto Wolff has aimed Christian Horner and Red Bull. The Austrian has been the most vocal critic of reports, suggesting Red Bull violated the FIA's 2021 budget cap. Red Bull has exceeded the $145 million limit by at least $10 million as per reports, and their Mercedes boss has urged the FIA to investigate this matter thoroughly and transparently. According to Wolff, even a minor breach 
overreach and overspending can make a car faster by up to a tenth for a second. And with Red Bull overspending by 10 million, he believes Red Bull will inherit an unfair advantage for the next three seasons. Red Bull has been light limbed and also about the matter. They have brushed off the remarks as defamatory and Helmut Marko has labeled Wolf as a sore loser. Team principal Horner has said that the team has interpreted the rules differently and is waiting for an answer. Wolf however claimed he was aware of Red Bull's spending for a while. The Austrian has claimed Mercedes has kept track of the upgrades brought by its rivals and the records match the current speculations. Wolf started early that it was about the time that questions were raised about his 2021 title rivals. Recently, he asserted this is not a moment in time where suddenly you discover the breach. He adds the audits have been going on for a long time. Every team has collaborated with the FIA. There have been discussions but forward and backwards about how the interpretations go. So Total Wolf says Red Bull's breach is not minor. Wolf believes a breach in the budget cap will alter the fate of every team and also how the season plays out. So when the pundits state the breach to the B minor, Wolf questions is it so called minor breach. Minor breaches of the cap are when a team overspends by 5% or less. This would result in less severe penalties like a fine of $25,000, but Wolf believes otherwise. He adds, I think the word is probably not correct, because if you're going to spend 5 million more and you're still in the minor breach, it still has a big impact on the championship. Total Wolf states that the Mercedes had to forego uh, key upgrades in 2021 and 2022 seasons due to budget limitations, and hence he finds it hard to tolerate a breach from his counterparts. Wolf said, we know exactly what they're spending 3.5 million on a year on parts that we bring to the car. And then you can see the difference it makes to spend another 500,000. It would make a big difference. He added, we haven't produced lightweight parts of the car in order to bring us down from a double digit overweight because we simply have gotten enough money. So we need to do it for next year. And I completely agree with Total Wolf and what he actually has to say here. Wolf believes the FIA will take the right decision necessary action as it feels fit. But the entire process must be transparent, and just action must be taken on any violations, whether that to be reduced budget, wine runner time, a fine, points deduction, or stripping the team from their championship. Now, I really do think that they should be stripped from their championship because Total Wolf makes a very good point. When he does say that, you know, the, the amount of upgrades they were actually going to put on the car but restricted themselves due to the budget, I think is a very important aspect to this whole breach. Red Bull breached it, and that's why they were able to be faster even if it's just the last lap now i think that if lewis hamilton actually does get you know his eighth driver's championship due to the fact that red bull actually caught themselves breaching then i think it would be good idea for you know someone like lewis hamilton to finally retire but that's still all up in the air whether that will happen or whether he will continue to go and continue to beat the record but he's definitely trying to beat schumacher's record of actually seven drivers championships which he's actually tied with with lewis hamilton so i think he, once he gets his eighth he can finally finalize himself as the goat and finally continue on with the rest of his career and also where his second life takes him so i think it's fantastic to see that Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon. Peace.